So let's start. Uh, the class aims words we used to say. So let me remind you once again that we are in phylum Cardata. In phylum Cardata, there are three subphylum: subphylum Eurocardata, subphylum Cephalocardata, and subphylum Vertebrata. Subphylum Vertebrata include superclass Anetha, Nathostomata. In Anetha, Astrocodermi and Cyclostomata are present. In Nathostomata, we are talking about that pisces, amphibians, reptiles, ants, mammals. We completed up to reptiles and now we are moving with uh, the general characters of ants, which we say in general as birds. The class ants. So in class ants, avis means bird. The class ants include few extinct and uh, the large number of extant birds. Extinct. Who gone away long back, we call them as uh, extinct and extant. That means at present that live, we can say. Extinct. The animals who live millions of years back who gone, the total species gone away, we can say that kind of extinct. That few extinct and large number of extant birds are present. That birds are characterized by, they are feathered, they have feathers and uh, they are called bipedal endothermic vertebrate. Bipedal. Actually, we use it to say, as, uh, they say them as tetrapods, isn't it? Tetrapods. Yeah, they are definitely tetrapods, four-legged animals, whom we call tetrapods, amphibia, reptilia, is mammalia. Among that, the two limbs are modified into wings. That's why now they are walking with four, two legs only. The remaining two, the four limbs are modified into wings. So that's why now you say them as bipedal. Okay, in general, we say tetrapoda, but personally, they get adapted into that uh, the, by the tetrapod, the four limbs are modified into wings. Next, endothermic. What is the meaning of endothermic? Endothermic, nothing but homeothermic. We can say endothermic is nothing but homeothermic, which means body temperature is going to be constant without change, with uh, irrespective of atmospheric temperature. If the organism's body temperature is constant, we call such an organism as homeothermic or we say warm-blooded. Homeothermic or warm-blooded animal. Or we can say uh, that endothermic. Okay, so birds are homeothermic or warm-blooded or endothermic along with Mammals. mammals. Very good. Aves and mammals. These two are endothermic or homeothermic or warm blooded or in that we say uh, they are called uh, warm blooded or homeothermic or endothermic organism. So modern flying birds have undergone modifications in their morphological, anatomical, physiological and uh, the, the features which undergone as adaptations to suit their aerial mode of life. That means in various ways that in external features, in internal organs, in the functioning of the internal organs, like uh, external features like morphological, internal organs like anatomical, the functioning of the internal organs like physiological, the features are undergone as adaptation to suit their aerial mode of life. The, we know that birds are leading aerial mode of life. So, <laughs> Along the length of general characters, <coughs> we need to focus on how that particular modifications went through. That means how the bird is doing that, what kind of modification bird went for to fly. So feathers, wings, powerful breast musculature, pneumatic bone, endothermy with high metabolic rate, the keen sense of vision are the major masters of Wait, wait, do have any problem we got? Feathers, wings, powerful breast musculature, pneumatic bones, 
endothermy with high metabolic rate keen sense of vision are the major flight adaptations we'll discuss each and everything we'll discuss but just see here that major flight adaptation which enable them to evolve as masters of air according to jj yang the birds in his words he considered he said the birds as masters of air according to jj yang that he said the birds as masters of air so the glorified reptiles who said glorified reptile t h huxley say the birds as glorified reptile t h huxley said the birds as glorified reptiles okay so the title given by t h huxley should remember j j yang said they are the masters of air j j yang said they are the masters of air and according to huxley the birds as glorified reptiles then who are the ancestors the theropods of the jurassic period the theropods of the jurassic period are believed to be as an ancestors of this particular modernized that present current bird so gave rise to the bird which got modernized in the cretaceous period in jurassic period they get originated from the theropods theropod reptiles birds are originated from reptiles from which reptile theropods So from the theropod reptiles in the Jurassic period, they gave rise and then modernized in the Cretaceous period. So we can say Cretaceous period is the time of uh, birds. That means they get modernized. The study of birds, study of birds, known as do you know ornithology. The study of birds is known as ornithology. Then the the man to be remembered. that here in this area dr salim ali the world famous indian ornithologist dr salim ali he is called bird man of india the world famous indian ornithologist and the bird man of india dr salim ali okay now let's move to the general characters body is streamlined similar kind we are seen in the case of fishes also the streamlined body that uh, spindle shaped body see the shape of that spindle shaped body which when they are flying that resistance to the air can be reduced over the streamlined or spindle shaped body so that one of the flight adaptation we can say streamlined or sing spindle shaped body okay now that uh, body is distinguished into head neck trunk and uh, rudimentary tail not much longer like reptiles but there is something is there okay so head is there head we can see and the neck region then the remaining body we say trunk and the small tail rudimentary tail we can say okay so the four limbs as we said they are tetrapods the amphibia reptilia is mammals we say tetrapods but here the four limbs are modified into wings and the hind limbs are adapted for walking running swimming perching perching nothing but sitting on a branch likewise in various uses they have that hind limbs they are talking the four limbs are modified into wings and the hind limbs are adapted for walking running swimming and perching sitting on a branch skin skin is dry and devoid of gland the skin is dry and devoid of glands to be remembered over skin from the beginning we are following the pisces the skin there is having scales on the surface in contractis placoid in astictis cycloid tenoid gonoid cosmoid need to frame the table in amphibia the soft and moist useful for respiration cutaneous in reptilia that the scales or shields are present among the Uh, the uh, skin of uh, reptiles, exoskeleton, as in the form of exoskeleton. Now we are saying, in case of birds, skin is dry and devoid of glands. They have only one gland in this area. That means, uh, in the tail location, except the oil gland, we say preen glands or uropygial glands. The preen glands or oil glands or uropygial glands, we use it to say at the base of tail. For your uh, for your remembrance, that means here you may have seen a duck always. Uh, Uh, that put their beak in this particular tail region. Do you know why? 
that because there is no gland all over the body here only gland present here is oil gland uropygial gland you know the duck is a little aquatic that means live in the uh, move out and into the water so the feathers to be oily and moist in case of uh, the particular ducks that's why always what it will do with the help of beak it will put the beak in this uropygial gland which is there in the tail region and take some oil and rub all over the body so that is the kind of adaptation you might have, you might have seen over that most of the birds will do but mostly in the duck you can see it clearly okay so do remember only gland on the skin is uropygial gland or preen gland or also called oil gland then exoskeleton exoskeleton consists of epidermal feathers having feathers is a unique feature here the scales and legs claws and toes the horny covering and the bee these are all exoskeleton so let me say once again the body contain feathers you might have seen the feathers in birds you can see in the diagram also the claws and toes focus here focus here the claws and toes okay the horny covering and the beak here let me take beak uh, here so horny covering the beak is covered by the a, a strong sheet we call it as ramphothika horny covering and the beak ramphothika the claws and toes scales and legs on the legs you can see the scales here so then uh, ramphothika and the beak all they are belongs to exoskeleton so feather is having that feather makes a that fly, flight adaptation we'll discuss endoskeleton is fully ossified that means it contains bones we are talking about the bones what is the speciality of bones here the bones are air filled sacs the bones are empty simply we say that means no bone marrow inside so what do you call such kind of hollow bones are said to be pneumatic bone so one thing we have to remember while looking towards the general characters of the birds so a particular character how will it be helpful for the flight or else what are the flight adaptation in that way you have to read okay now as uh, feathers is one of them and pneumatic bone so while an organism when want to fly that should reduce as much as maximum uh, the high, that weight of the body should be reduced over so that means here the pneumatic bones nothing is there that no air uh, no bone marrow there so what makes over that hollow with air cavities will helpful for the lightweight bones in the body okay we call it as pneumatic bone which is a flight adaptation skull is monocondylic recall fishes are monocondylic amphibians are dicondylic reptilians are monocondylic now again birds are monocondylic having single occipital condyle then vertebrae are heterocelous recall from the fishes that we are seen procelous amphicelous opisthocelous in case of uh, reptilia that uh, amphibia uh, the pisces we are seen till the time procelous amphicelous opisthocelous birds are little bit different heterocelous that vertebrae are heterocelous i'll show you how the heterocelous vertebrae are seen over they are like uh, like this saddle shape you can say simply it say saddle shape so just model i am showing here i am not drawing the diagram so vertebrae are heterocelous the last thoracic lumbar then sacral then some number of uh, coccygeal caudal vertebrae are fused the last thoracic lumbar sacral and anterior few caudal vertebrae are fused to form synsacrum the thing to be noted down here that is synsacrum why because it is also a flight adaptation like pneumatic bones so pneumatic bones are uh, uh, reducing the weight which facilitate the flight here this is also one of them imagine you are flying you are flying what is your problem your hands became wings okay now you are flying so in the air in the air steadily that like this is going to be a biggest problem to you may bend down isn't it why because our vertebral column so i am asking when you are flying you feel you can feel this no possibility but saying here 
our vertebral column is much flexible you can bend anywhere so that cannot facilitate the flight at the time of flying so that's why this area we are talking vertebral column so what they are saying the last thoracic from thoracic region onward last thoracic then lumbar region then sacral region and in case of caudal so this area all the vertebrae are getting fused if you get a, a capacity to fly if 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 we are saying hypothetically when you are flying that uh, on air you will have a bigger problem here where that making your back straight is going to be a bigger problem so what we have to do what we have to do is a uh, left over to the issue when it happen we have to stick we have to make a uh, a pad or something else we have to tie over but there is a special adaptation itself in the bird that uh, thoracic lumbar sacral and anterior few caudal vertebrae let me show you as i said to you earlier so as a just model i am taking an organism here an avatar like organism so the vertebrae which are present in the neck region are called as cervical vertebrae then after thoracic vertebrae then after lumbar vertebrae then after sacral vertebrae and then after coccygeal tail vertebrae okay so we can classify like this cervical vertebrae thoracic vertebrae lumbar vertebrae sacral vertebrae and caudal or coccygeal vertebrae anywhere either it is human being or fish or amphibian or reptile we classify the vertebrae like this cervical thoracic lumbar sacral and coccygeal now what we are talking about some last thoracic that means here onward last thoracic lumbar and sacral and few caudal vertebrae are going to be fused to form synsacrum they are going to form synsacrum so we are talking about this so remember this that facilitate at the time when it is flying not to bend so simply you have remember it as it's a flight adaptation it's a flight adaptation having synsacrum and the remaining caudal vertebrae fused to form the pygo style that provide support to the tail feather that means whatever left over left over that vertebrae left over caudal vertebrae we said very few few caudal vertebrae participate in the synsacrum so remaining we are talking about remaining are going to form pygo style remaining are going to form pygo style okay so caudal vertebrae are fused to form the remaining caudal vertebrae fused to form the pygo style which provides support to the tail feather okay so that's it synsacrum and pygo style to be remembered in case of uh, these organisms next it is fused with who is fused that uh, the pygo style and synsacrum we are talking about they are fused with the pelvic girdle provide and support to the hind limbs they fuse to the pelvic girdle and provide support to the hind limbs okay next the sternum has keel as i shown yesterday to you what is the, where the sternum is in the thoracic region the rod like bone we can say the sternum so that where vertebra ribs are coming and attaches here so ribs on the door ventral that uh, dorsal side they get attached to the vertebral column and ventral side they attach to the sternum so there is some speciality to the sternum that this sternum anywhere that they are they are cylindrical in format that means in case of human also but here in these organisms the sternum is with keel or carina a groove like structure in the center sternum with keel or carina for the attachment of the muscle stronger muscles are present imagine these are the fingers that means um, the four limbs we are talking the hands so from here uh, that muscles one side they enters into the one side they enters into the bird the wings and other side they need to attach to somewhere into the stronger portion that's why the sternum is going to be very much broader and this area we are talking the sternum is going to be very much broader and it has the keel or carina 
it has the keel or carina so one of the flight adaptation we have seen pneumatic bones and we have seen sin sacrament phygostyle and now the sternum has a keel or carina for the attachment of flight muscles so this is exception in ratit ratit bird ratite we use it to say based on this only we classified birds as ratite and carinite flight birds are called carinite and non flying birds are called ratites the ratite the birds ratites we can say so the ratite birds are non flying birds that's why there is no need of keel or carina next the clavicles are fused with the interclavicle to form a v shaped bone the clavicle clavicle is uh, what do you say the bone of uh, the thoracic region again these clavicles fuse and form that uh, with fused with the interclavicle to form a v shaped bone we say uh, we call it as the furcula or wish bone or merry thought bone we say it as furcula or wish bone or merry thought bone we can say okay so the clavicles are fused with the <coughs> the clavicles are fused with the interclavicle to form a v shaped bone are called furcula or wish bone or merry thought bone <coughs> excuse me so here uh, locating this bone let let's talk about our collar bone you may you might know your collar bone in near your uh, fore limb the near your hand that hand below the neck neck and hands in that area we'll find a collar bone so that bone we say clavicle actually so the two clavicles along with the interclavicle they are going to form a furcula or wish bone or merry thought bone very interesting why they called it wish bone or merry thought bone so why they are called wish bone or merry thought bone uh, that in general in some areas of the world the people believed that this bone which is a v shaped bone we called it as furcula uh, that uh, whatever the wishes the people have that can be fulfilled over if you uh, that pick this particular bone taking this bone into the hands if you uh, whatever your desires if you say your wishes will come uh, the fulfill uh, that having a belief like that we don't know whether they are true or not that in some areas in some countries they have that kind of belief mostly merry thought marriage marriage prop that means those who want uh, uh, the marriages here those are having uh, that uh, that kind of people if they pick this particular bone and uh, say they, they i want to marry someone like uh, that that kind of wish can be fulfilled over <coughs> i'm not going to say it's true but the name because of that only wish bone or merry thought bone belief of some people and that way our technical name is here furcula who is furcula that uh, the fusion of two clavicles and an interclavicle is called furcula likewise next ribs are double headed as in the crocodiles and therian mammals that means in case of human being itself itself ribs are double headed that means let me say once again that this is the sternum where ribs come and attach and other side the ribs are going to attach to the vertebral column where they get attached to the vertebral column there they have two heads that's why we call double headed in case of human being also okay so i think you got the picture of this back side vertebral column front side sternum ribs when that uh, ventral side they are connected to the sternum and dorsal side uh, they have connection with the vertebral column so that side we are talking they are double headed the ribs are double headed they have name also capitulum and tuberculum each head named as capitulum and tuberculum so all modern flying birds are provided with powerful breast muscle flight muscle chiefly pectoralis major pectoralis minor coracobrachialis brevis are longest that's what we have to talk about the sternum the sternum is broad and having the keel or carina which facilitates the attachment of the the strongest muscles which are going to enter into the the wings 
okay so that uh, they have muscles to be remembered pectoral is major and pectoral is minor only two are given one more is there coraco brachial is brevis or longus teeth are absent in the extant birds in extinct birds teeth are present actually but the present in living uh, birds you don't find any teeth teeth are absent in extant birds esophagus esophagus is often dilated into a crab for the storage of food so that you might know that esophagus esophagus which opens into the stomach actually so that esophagus is dilated and form the crab that is going to store the food material in case of pigeon that crab secrete the milk also to feed the young ones The stomach is usually divided into glandular proventricular and muscular gizzard. Let me say once again what we said about the esophagus. Esophagus dilated into crab and stomach divided into that glandular proventricular and muscular gizzard. Okay, glandular proventricular and muscular gizzard. Because that uh, uh, there is no teeth, the grains are taken directly. So inside they are going to be grind. so that's why gizzard muscular gizzard helpful for grinding okay so that's about the elementary canal and next about the cloaca as we discussed in case of uh, uh, reptiles cloaca the same reptiles aim some initial uh, that prototherian mammals also having these kind of feature cloaca cloaca which anus opens into the cloaca urinary bladder opens into the cloaca cloaca comprises of three portions coprodium urodium and proctodium likewise in case of reptiles no uh, that uh, uh, no difference there coprodium urodium and proctodium are as usual present talking about the respiratory system consists of compact spongy undistensible lungs which without alveoli without alveoli the compact spongy undistensible lungs which are without alveoli we can see there that lung speciality and lungs are a continuation lungs have air sacs they facilitate the continuous oxygenation of the blood and pneumaticity of the bones as a unique feature okay let's see this feature once again once again uh, that the speciality of birds what is the meaning of continuous oxygenation further i am taking lungs uh, just lungs i am taking here so these are the lungs in if it is human being will have will find some alveoli inside what we are saying there is no alveoli okay so then these lungs are connected with the air sacs air sacs around nine air sacs are present superior cervical inferior cervical that anterior thoracic posterior thoracic interclavicular no need of names for you air sacs are present that you have to remember only lungs for respiration only lungs are for respiration air sacs for what air sacs just like uh, uh, that to uh, reduce the weight that means air filled bags we can say so these kind of air sacs are present and these air sacs are continued with the bones we said pneumatic bones okay so when air comes into the lungs through the trachea nasal trachea that air comes into the lungs not only will stop here also enters into the the total area from lungs to the air sacs to the pneumatic bone from lungs to air sacs to the pneumatic bone very interesting thing here you just see but oxygen uh, transport uh, that means exchange of gases occurs here only okay so for example some uh, amount of oxygen in that uh, now we are in first year that's why that's why i am explaining in the form of a, a percentage wise actually pressure wise we have to see that 104 mm of hg oxygen partial pressure will find over in general in lungs okay so just percentage wise you might know that 21% oxygen is there in atmosphere so i am talking in that manner so when uh, air enters into the lungs 21% oxygen uh, into the air sacs 21% oxygen into the pneumatic bone but actual gaseous exchange occurs only in the lungs do you accept yeah because lungs are only the respiratory organ imagine some 5 6% is uh, oxygen is taken out in general that much only they'll take 5 6% that means 
what is the oxygen percentage here now after uh, that uh, particular uh, wait after taking oxygen of around uh, the 50 per the 5 to 6 percent the remaining oxygen can be 16 percent okay that means oxygen percentage is reduced now this is all happening during inhalation just focus here during exhalation expiration we are talking means air will come back again from the pneumatic bones to air sacs okay so how much oxygen which is uh, present here the air coming from oxygen coming from the pneumatic bones and air sacs to the lungs what is the percentage of oxygen Simulated 21 percent will be seen over because there is no gaseous exchange in the air sacs and bone do you accept this that's why when this oxygen from air to that uh, here it came uh, the 21 percent oxygen during expiration exhalation also you can see again oxygen will be taken over so that simply what i am saying you can take oxygen now i am showing here trachea lung and then air sac and then bone just a hypothetical diagram i'm showing here only you can take blood capillaries are going to collect oxygen from here only okay so now let me talk about the inhalation during air entry entered like this entered like this okay this is inhalation okay inspiration is over oxygen gases are taken inside so you are collected oxygen okay from where only from the lungs now expiration we are talking about expiration that means air should be returned from here okay so when air is returning from here air is returning from here again you are collecting oxygen you just imagine again you are collecting oxygen wait wait Hmm. So, from the entry, first of all, let's talk about the entry. So, air entered, lungs, air sacs and bones. So, you are collected oxygen. When air is returning back, when you are returning back also, that oxygen is available. 21% is as usual present here, nothing exchange. That's why, again, they are able to supply oxygen when they return also. Okay. So that is a speciality. That's what we call continuous oxygenation. The lungs have air sacs and they facilitate the continuous oxygenation of the blood and pneumatic bone. There is a unique feature here. Never you can see. What happens in case of human being? That also we have to see. That means this is trachea. These are lungs. Air comes here and oxygen you are taken. Air goes. Less oxygenated air will go back. So that's a simple task. But in case of birds, what we are talking about, that uh, lungs are continued. Lungs are continued with uh, air sacs and uh, air sacs and then to the pneumatic bone. But you are collecting oxygen here only. That's why when you are returning back, you are giving oxygen again. Air is returning back from the pneumatic bones to the air sacs to the lungs. They are giving oxygen again. So that is the meaning of uh, they facilitate the continuous oxygenation of the blood and pneumaticity of the bone, which is called a unique feature. And then voice box, which is called syrinx. Our C is larynx. There uh, is called a syrinx. Voice box is syrinx. That lies at the junction of the trachea and bronchi. Means, let me show you. So here it is a trachea and these are the lungs in case of human being. Here in this place we'll have larynx as voice box. But the birds don't have larynx, they have syrinx, we can say. Whatever they have, that is syrinx, that is between the trachea and lungs. The syrinx is there between the trachea and lungs. This is the location. Our is the anterior to the trachea. That is, that is called this is larynx, and our that birds are having syrinx. Try to find out the difference. Okay junction of the trachea and bronchi heart here already we have seen in case of reptilia incompletely divided three chambered heart 
and the crocodilia we are seen four chambered heart crocodilia we are seen four chambered heart then uh, four chambered heart sinus venosus conus arteriosus both are absent sinus venosus and conus arteriosus both are absent as in mammals like mammals they are uh, uh, they are having similar kind with a small difference we have left systemic arch birds are having right systemic arch in case of mammal right left systemic arch is present in case of birds right systemic arch is present that means in birds left systemic arch is absent in case of uh, mammals uh, left systemic arch is present but right systemic arch is absent renal portal system is reduced hepatic portal system is present but renal portal system is reduced erythrocytes are nucleated as in reptile like reptiles like amphibians only mammals are having an enucleate without nucleus we can see kidneys are metanephric and three lobe that means in generally we will have two lobes a notch or hilum but in case of birds three lobe like this the kidney so three lobed kidney is present and examples the urinary bladder is absent in general except in ostrich this is ostrich a flightless bird we can say ostrich the birds are uricotelic like the reptiles means water conservation technique you can see ostrich there that uh, except ostrich urinary bladder is absent in all brain is large olfactory lobes that uh, sense of smell we are talking that is much reduced in case of uh, birds the alpha the sense of smell is much reduced except kiwi kiwi is a having exception the cranial nerves 12 pairs of cranial nerves are present eyes possess a sclerotic plate when you see the bird eyes when you see now we try to observe this time that a uh, close look on the eyes you can see the eyes are surrounded by the sclerotic plates like this this is the eye the center blue circle that eyes are surrounded by sclerotic plates now we try to observe when you go inside a comb shaped pectin okay, which is uh, unique here let me for that uh, i am showing a brief of uh, eye you might, you might have learned over in earlier classes that we have the cornea and the retina let me see this is the cornea and uh, there some layers will be seen over like uh, outer sclera and middle layer we can say choroid middle choroid and innermost layer is said to be retina like with no need of names just you need to know the location of that comb like structure pectin here lens are present which uh, ligaments are going to hold over if you remember you learn this in the form of aqueous humor and this plate is called vitreous humor vitreous humor so uh, that the red one is retina inside the eye we are talking about red one is retina so this fluid is said to be vitreous humor okay so between the cornea and lens whatever the fluid present that is called aqueous humor so now we are talking about that particular comb like structure pectin a comb shaped vascular pectin here it is in the retina the comb like vascular pectin is present project from the retina into the vitreous humor except in kiwi which makes a clear vision you might know that the bird will fly in the air and uh, uh, should uh, search for the food on the ground so that means the keen sense of vision is required over so that uh, comb like structure pectin is going to clear any kind of wastes if present in the vitreous humor which makes their vision is much clear much clear much clarity is possible because of the pectin okay so that you remember that word pectin comb like structure pectin projects from the retina into the vitreous humor except in kiwi middle ear has a single ear ossicle the columella oris likewise from the previous olfactory sense is usually poor but uh, that exception in kiwi sexes are separate unisexual animals these are unisexual animals no doubt 
the testes are paired but the ovary and oviduct of the right side are almost completely degenerated atrophy nothing but degenerated okay so that means the oviduct of the right side are almost complete that that ovary of the right side and oviduct of the right side left ovary left oviduct only working okay so but left uh, right side ovary right side oviduct are degenerated atrophy means degenerated and the copulatory organ is absent in males except in ratites ducks and geese as i said to you ratites means flightless bird and ducks and geese in these three the copulatory organ is absent in males except these three they are having copulatory organ all the birds are oviparous no doubt about that eggs egg laying animals next up megalecithal with large amount of yolk cladoic which contain calcium carbonate this is a shell the calcium carbonate shell which prevent the loss of water from the body we call such kind of eggs as cladoic egg the fertilization fertilization is internal internal fertilization can be seen on that as is well earlier we are seen in case of reptilian cleavage is meroblastic meroblastic cleavage discoidal cleavage i'll do i do one thing here i'll also explain here the, how it is related to the megalecithal let me show you once again there is a egg which we say zygote in general terms and this egg is surrounded by large amount of yolk yolk substance is present and yolk is only for nourishment yolk is to provide only nourishment okay so let me show you clearly that red color zygote this is zygote and this we can say having large amount of yolk we call megalecithal eggs having large amount of yolk we say megalecithal eggs okay so yolk is only to provide nourishment so that's why yolk is not dividing who is dividing zygote is dividing that is going to become embryo so uh, that's why we say meroblastic mere that means a little part of the egg is dividing we say mere meroblastic okay then why it is called discoidal you see in the diagram you can say why it is called discoidal on the total egg only embryo zygote part is dividing that look like a disc we say discoidal okay so in reptiles also the same isn't it they are megalecithal they are meroblastic they are discoidal okay so that's it about uh, the fertilization internal megalecithal eggs cladoic eggs meroblastic cleavage and discoidal cleavage we can see hatchlings are altrucial precocial what is the meaning of altrucial and precocial flying birds are altrucial that you just uh, recall that that you see on the trees when the bird lay the eggs immediately can we say like that that particular birds uh, uh, that uh, the, the young ones who get hatched over the small young ones i am trying here uh, the small young one can they fly immediately no not at all that means they need some parental care that need they need some parental care okay so that what do you say altrucial what is the meaning of precocial in case of flightless bird like ostrich when the eggs are hatched over into the young one young one start running immediately no need of parental care what we talk about precocial altrucial and precocial so the flying birds are having uh, this kind of feature altrucial feature need some parental care till they develop the wings and precocial in case of flightless birds okay let us see some examples here Carvus splendens, our uh, well-known crow. Columba livia, Columba pigeon. Cetacula parrot. Pavo, Pavo cristatus, the national bird of India, peafowl. This is flightless bird. That Aptenodides, penguin, special category they have. Impenni, they belongs to order Impenni. not ratite not carinia 
neofran vulture flight bird carinate we can see and coriaceous bengalensis blue jay state bird of united ap coriaceous bengalensis now it's a state bird of telangana so these are the examples let me say once again columba livia columba pigeon sitakila parrot pavo tea fowl the national bird of india car that carvus splendens the crow itself neofran vulture aptenodides penguin and coriaceous bengalensis blue jay the state bird of ap so for non flying birds we can say uh, that ostrich kiwi there are examples we'll see we'll see archaeopteryx lithographica they were important example to be remembered they considered as jurassic fossil bird that visual you are looking towards here in the diagram is not at all the original it's not a photograph it's a painting the hypothetical the birds such kind you may see in uh, avatar so many it possess yeah in avatar movie you can see most extinct reptilians they are created in avatar movie that's why in avatar movie whatever that particular creature they look like reptiles and with bird bird character both reptiles and bird character our one of the archaeopteryx lithographica <coughs> lithographica litho means soil graphica means line that means in bavaria germany this particular fossil has got like a uh, line graphical line fossil we got in the soil okay so that's why it is said to be archaeopteryx what is the speciality it has some reptilian characters it has some bird character consider to me a connecting link between the reptiles and bird based on looking towards these kind of organisms only we can say that as birds are evolved from reptiles so that's the story of archaeopteryx lithographica next let's talk about ratites ratite paleonate we say flight birds are called Rat ratite or paleonate. They are more than flightless running birds. Ratite, we say flightless running birds. You see in the uh, the picture that ostrich. They are example for discontinuous distribution. They are discontinuous in their distribution like the lung fishes. Earlier we are saying dipnoi fishes. I said over. Protopterus is in Africa. Neoceratodus in Australia. Lepidosiren. lung fish live in the south america so that means there are only three types of fishes they are present only the respected places i said marsupials that is mammal we are talking so that ma marsupial mammals that means kangaroo kangaroo is the marsupial mammal so where it stay where it say that lives in australia we call that is discontinuous distribution means if located in one particular area not seen anywhere we say discontinuous in case of flightless running birds uh, that kiwi one of the good example isn't it so they no need of uh, that sternum sternum we said in case of flight birds a sternum is broad and sternum should have keel or carina for the attachment of flight muscle that feature we said in flight adaptation these are not flight birds that's why that reduced wings raft like sternum raft that means almost cylindrical without keel no groove at all and uh, the male says with penis male copulatory organ penis is present in them they do not possess syring as uh, uh, clavicles are absent there and usually they do not possess syring clavicles and usually preen gland also let's talk about the examples of this struthio camelus african ostrich it there in the name african ostrich available only in africa one of the best example for discontinuous distribution please do remember this word discontinuous distribution the birds are having these birds flightless birds are very good example for discontinuous distribution they are very good example for discontinuous distribution that by the name itself we can understand african ostrich struthio camelus rhea americana american ostrich we say kiwi national bird of new zealand new zealand only available in new zealand new zealand rhea rhea americana we say american ostrich available only in america 
Dromius, emu, emu bird. Some people brought this emu from Australia to here the, for emu farming, but originally this bird is belongs to their own. Casuaris is another one. Casuaris. Okay. So that's all about the general characters of the birds that we say. General characters of the birds here. And uh, let's take uh, let's take a look back again with the general characters. We start from habit and habitat. Where do they live? Birds, where do they live? Birds, where do they live? Do you I want to give options? Do you want me to give options? Okay, land, land. water, air. Land and air. On land, flightless birds, aerial mode of life, we can see there. Okay, very good. Locomotion. Wings. Yeah, locomotion with the help of wings, flying mode of locomotion in flight birds. The four limbs are modified into wings and uh, the wings are having the feathers, the special feathers to be remembered are just only one feather at least you have to remember. Quill feathers, we use it to say feathers for the flight are said to be quill feathers. Quill feathers on the wings are called remiges. Quill feathers on the tail are called retrices. That means there are the, the quill feathers, if they are present on the wing, they are called remiges. And quill feathers on the tail are called retrices. There are some of feathers are there. Contour feathers and phyllo plumes are also present, but flight feathers are quill feathers only. The young one, is having very soft feathers, isn't it? They are called down feathers. Just you remember only one word. Quill feathers are for flight. At least we should know the name of the flight feather. Feathers for flight. Next, nutrition. Here are different things are there. Some are sang the grainy vores. Some are uh, saprophagus. That means uh, it eats and the vultures eats and the dead animals. Likewise, mostly grainy vores, isn't it? They can take grain. Digestive system. Is there any speciality? What about the teeth? Absent. Yeah, teeth are absent, teeth are absent in the extinct, extant birds. Present birds don't have teeth. Extinct birds are having teeth. Okay, next, Inca. Is there any speciality there? Yeah, we have some speciality. Esophagus is dilated into crop. In pigeon like structure, they are going to secrete the milk even. And stomach is modified into glandular, ventriculous, and muscular gizzard for grinding, we say. And uh, the finally, anus opens into the cloaca, a special structure we just talked about. The anus opens into the cloaca, which contains coprodium, which anus opens, urodium, which urinary bladder opens, and proctodium, which it opens out. So cloacal aperture. So like reptiles, they are also having cloaca. That to be remembered from here. Next, respiratory system. Anything special? Lungs without alveoli. alveoli. Yeah, lungs are without alveoli. And what is the very, very important feature in them? Continuous oxygen. Continuous oxygenation. Mm, continuous oxygenation. Oxygen available in, in, sir, in that uh, inlet and while exhalation also. While coming out also oxygen available. Lungs are located here. That means while going inside, oxygen is available. Well, air coming from the pneumatic bones and air sacs, there again they give the oxygen. We call it as continuous oxygenation. And instead of larynx, that means mammals are having larynx as the voice box, they have syrinx between the trachea and bronchi. The syrinx is present, that is to be remembered. Okay, next circulatory system. Circulatory system. Number of chambers in the heart? Four chambers. Very good. Four chamber, double circulation is present. Four chambered heart, double circulation. Right systemic arch is present, which arises from the left ventricle. Right systemic arch is present, which left systemic arch is absent. Next, excreted, okay, well, RBC, as is the oval and nucleated RBC. Renal portal system is reduced. Hepatic portal system is present. Okay. Next, excretory system. Is there any special? Uh, the number of lobes in the kidney? 
three lobes. Three lobes. Three lobes. Three lobes. Three lobes. And type of excretory material? Uricotelic. Uric acid. Uricotelic animal. We can say uric acid. Uricotelic animal. Okay. Next, nervous system. Nervous system. Anything special to say here? Nervous system. Sense organs are much discussed here. Surrounding the eye, we said about the sclerotic plate, and uh, inside the eye, in the retina, a comb-like structure, pectin is present, that is making the clear vision. Comb-like structure remaining same. Middle ear is calmillaris. That uh, all the remaining are same here. Not much development. We'll see that uh, the eye is uh, to be remembered. The comb-like structure. Pick the number of cranial nerves. Twelve pairs. Twelve pairs. Very good. Number of cranial nerves are twelve pairs. Next, skeletal system. More to be discussed here only. More to be discussed here only. Skeletal system. Okay. So nervous system, then skeletal system. Skull. What type of skull it is? Monocondylic. monocondylic skull. Skull is monocondylic. Is there any special? So many specials are there. Bones are pneumatic, air filled, connected to the lungs even with the help of air sacs. Okay, that is the speciality. And uh, uh, that uh, wish bone or very thought bone, the two clavicle fuse with the interclavicle and form the wish bone or very thought bone. That is the speciality. V-shaped percolite forms. And the thoracic, last thoracic, then lumbar, sacral, few caudal vertebrae fuse and form. Fuse and form. Last thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and few caudal vertebrae are fuse and form. V shaped bone. No, 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 no. So here. Thin sacrum. We say thin sacrum. And the remaining caudal vertebrae are going to form the phygostyle. Thin sacrum and phygostyle. Here, yeah, thin sacrum, phygostyle. This to be remembered over. Okay, next, reproductive system. Unisexual or bisexual? Unisexual. Unisexual, reproductive. Male, female are separate. Then next, fertilization, internal. Internal fertilization is seen over. The next uh, eggs, what type of eggs they have? Megalecithal yeah, eggs are present. Eggs. Because of the megalecithal eggs, we say the, the cleavage is going to be miroblastic and discoidal. And uh, the shelled eggs, eggs are surrounded by the calcium carbonate shell to prevent the loss of water. That what do you say? Cladoic eggs. We can say that as cladoic eggs. Particularly in the birds, you have to remember altrucial and precautious. In flight birds, altrucial condition you can see. In flightless bird, precautious condition you can see. Altrucial and precautious. No parental care required, we say precautious. There is a parental care required for the flight birds. What do you say? Altrucial. That we discussed. Now we have some questions. Let me erase this. And let's go with some questions here. The homeothermic serapsidin, whatever I asked, that is the biggest question. That means for every class, before every class, I am asking some questions. If you ask yourself, these are the questions. If you feel these are the questions, you will be successful here. Means after all, reading the textbook, you should write like this on a white paper. You try to remember that particular point. Those points you can't remember, you revise them. Again, you try to recall this. If you try to recall, if you try to rewrite, that is much, much better. But at least I am giving. You just try to recall. If you have the digest system, whatever digest system is given in the text, he is given in the text. That is very important for us. Because you are not here to learn the Yale's digestive system, which is a 20 marks question in de degree second year. You are not here to learn. Just what is given in textbook. That only you have to go for. Okay, what is given in textbook only how to go okay uh, then uh, that is a bigger question we have to remember it as so the, if you are able to answer these questions you will be able to answer all kind of questions like this. whom you thermic are 
homeothermic subsidence. Who is subsidence? Skull type. Based on the skull type, we said subsidence. Who are subsidence then here? Reptiles and apes. Reptiles and apes. Yeah, very good. Reptiles and apes. But reptiles are poikilothermic, isn't it? So our answer is birds. Birds. Homeothermic subsidence. Huh? Birds. The most important character of birds is feathers, scales, beak, and monocondylic skull. Feathers. 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 Very good. Feathers. That means birds means flying. So that's why we can select that only. The type of cleavage in birds is. Meroblastic. 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 Holoblastic equal, holoblastic unequal, meroblastic peripheral. Meroblastic. Very good. So that's it. That's about the general characters of birds. That's all about the general characters of the birds here.